back to Biostat Squid. So we previously saw how the log rank test is used to test whether there is a difference between the survival times of different groups. For example, we might compare the survival time of a group of patients who were given drug A versus the survival times of patients who were given drug B. But you're probably also interested in other factors that affect survival. Do men survive longer than women? Does smoking have an influence in survival? What about having higher low blood pressure? Does having a mutation in a certain gene increase the odds of surviving longer? What about factors like exercise or diet? Anyways, the log rank test does not allow for other explanatory variables to be taken into account. That is why we need the Cox Proportionals Hazard Survival Regression, which is the topic of today's video. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So Cox regression, also known as the proportional hazards model, is used in survival time analysis to analyze the survival times of individuals or the time until a specific event, for example, time until death, occurs. We can also use Cox regression to test the difference between survival times of particular groups of patients while still allowing for other variables that may influence survival time. So in this model, the hazard rate is the probability of the event happening, given that you have survived up to a specific point in time. For example, let's take the typical example of a clinical trial where the event of interest, the hazard, is death. And the hazard rate would be the probability of dying, given that a patient has survived up to a given point in time or the risk of death at that particular moment. And as we said, the nice thing about Cox regression is that you can include covariates, which are independent variables that you may think influence the time to event. These covariates can be categorical, for example, gender, but they can also be discrete or continuous, for example, blood pressure, and are used to model how different factors affect the hazard function. But now let's move on to the outputs of Cox regression. So what do we actually get after performing Cox regression? And I'm going to talk about coefficients and hazard ratios. So the Cox model mathematically models the hazard function as a function of covariates. Your covariates are just your independent variables, right? So for every covariate, we will get a coefficient. And the coefficients, these beta numbers indicate the log hazard ratio associated with that specific covariate, assuming that all other covariates remain constant. So let's take this bit by bit. A positive coefficient, so when beta is bigger than zero, indicates an increase in the log hazard, so a higher risk. A negative coefficient indicates a decrease in the log hazard and a coefficient of around zero means that there is no difference in the hazard. So the variable has null or very little effect on the survival time. For example, if a covariate, let's take age, has a coefficient of 0 0.2, it means that a one unit increase of the covariate, so being one year older, is associated with a 20% increase in the log hazard of the event. Okay, but what does a 20% increase in the log hazard of the event even mean? Coefficients are a bit difficult to interpret because they're in the log hazard scale. So to make it easier to interpret, we can kind of remove the logarithm by taking the exponential and then we get the hazard ratio. So the hazard ratio is just the exponentiated form of the coefficient and it quantifies the relative change in the hazard of the event for a one unit change in the covariate. So hazard ratios we can interpret directly. 
a hazard ratio bigger than one indicates an increased hazard. A hazard ratio lower than one indicates a decreased hazard. And if the hazard ratio is around one, it indicates that there's no big change in the hazard. So let's have a look at a specific example. For example, we are studying the effect of a new medication, drug A, on the survival of patients with a specific medical condition and we're comparing it to a standard treatment, which is drug B. And we obtain a hazard ratio of 0.6. This means that patients who received drug A had a 40% lower hazard of death compared to those who received drug B. In other words, the risk of death was reduced by 40% in the drug A group. Nice, so these are the main outputs of Cox regression, but let's put it all together and have a look at also p-values and other metrics with an example. So again, typical example of a clinical trial setting. We're studying the survival time after being diagnosed with a disease, and there's a promising new drug in development, drug A, and we'd like to see if it actually improves survival time compared to the current treatment, drug B. But we'd also like to take into account the difference in survival time of females compared to males, and we also want to correct for age at diagnosis, so the age the patient has when he or she was diagnosed. So our predictors, uh, or covariates are the treatment, so the drug that was used, gender and age. And since we have multiple independent variables or predictors, we need Cox regression. So these are the results. So first, let's have a look at the significance of the results. Now, we're using a significance threshold of 0.05, which means that only age and gender were significantly associated with the length of survival because they have a p-value lower than 0.05. If we have a look at the treatment, we have a coefficient of minus 1.8. So again, this is the logarithm of the hazard ratio. Since it's negative, it suggests that there's a decrease in the log hazard, which indicates a lower risk of the event. However, this difference with um, drug B is not significantly different if we look at the p-value. But if we want to um, get a better or more direct interpretation, we can directly look at the hazard ratio. So the hazard ratio is just the exponentiated form of minus 1.8, so e to the power of minus 1.8, which is 0 0.152. And this basically is telling us that a person receiving drug A is 0 0.152 times as likely to die at any time as a patient receiving drug B. In other words, the risk of dying associated with drug A appears to be much lower. However, the confidence interval also contains one, which indicates that there may not be any difference in the risk between the two treatments. If we move on to age, the hazard ratio for age is 1.25, which indicates that a patient who is one year older than another patient, both being given the same treatment and of the same gender, has an increased risk for dying by a factor of 1.25. Note that in this case, the confidence interval does not contain one, indicating that there's actually a statistical significance of age. And finally, gender has a negative regression coefficient, meaning that women have a decreased log hazard of death compared to men. And remember that to get a more intuitive interpretation, we can just exponentiate it or look directly at the hazard ratio. And in this case, it's approximately 0 0.4. In other words, women have a 40% lower risk of death compared to men, given the same treatment and of the same age. I just wanted to quickly say that with any other statistical test, Cox regression comes with some assumptions and you need to check if you meet these assumptions before you use 
Cox regression or any other statistical test on your data as a violation of them can lead to false conclusions. So, for example, Cox regression assumes that the hazard or the risk of the event happening at any given time for any patient or any individual is proportional to the hazard for any other individual. In other words, the relative risk of the event is assumed to be constant over time. Another assumption is that the survival time of one individual should not affect the survival time of another individual. And finally, I'll perhaps mention that censoring is independent of the survival time. So if censoring is actually related to the event of interest, that could bias the results. Anyway, these are just some of the key assumptions of the Cox regression, but there are some others. Nice, so I hope this video gave you a clear understanding on how to interpret the Cox regression analysis results. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'm always happy to hear your feedback. You can also find additional resources and useful links in biostatsquid.com. And I think that is it. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.